Welcome to a special edition of America Uncanceled. We had the great honor, as Matt has mentioned, in meeting with a delegation of members of Congress from Brazil, as well as journalists and activists. And joining me now is Paulo Figueiredo. He's a journalist, one of the top journalists from Brazil that now you're living in Florida. Tell us your story. I've been living in Florida for the best part of the last decade, but now it's different because, because now I live under exile. I can go back to Brazil. Why? Uh, well, it's... Uh, they decided that to seize my passport, cancel my passport. They blocked all my social media accounts in Brazil. You can access them normally if you're here in the U.S., but if you're in Brazil, uh, you can't access any of my uh, social media. And I used to have like 5 million followers, a decent following. Um, and they froze all my bank accounts. They issued a fine for every time I said something. What year something. did they do that? Was it following uh, when uh, President Lula was brought into office? So until uh, January 2023, I had the number one show on primetime TV, cable TV, cable TV, uh, roughly 1.5 million viewers every day. Uh, we used to beat CNN Brazil by twofold. Uh, all the competitors we were really leading the viewership right uh, but then on January uh, after Lula took office the Department of Justice opened an investigation against the station I used to work for Which and station is that it's 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 called Jovem Pan yeah uh, JP News uh, mm -hmm. sometimes it's known like that here in the US and they had to fire all the conservative commentators my colleague who you met Mark Antonio yes. Looks like Superman. <laughs> uh, he was he was uh, he, he was fired at the same time. So ha they had to change the, uh, the whole process on how to do journalism in there, right. so they wouldn't have their concession uh, canceled by the government. So it's it was a very powerful thing. And obviously, you all were questioning and critical of the of the Lula gov Lula government, and did. That obviously had a huge impact on Lula taking action in the administration and obviously the Supreme Court taking action. Walk us through. I think it's really important to understand for Americans, um, because we're seeing this weaponization of our own uh, judicial system, there, we call it lawfare as well. What is happening in Brazil in terms of the Supreme Court and how they have become really uh, judicial activists to take down political opponents? I like to play with this a little bit, saying that the ideas come from the United States, actually. Really? It yes. does? Yes. We it's, thought it was coming from, you know, no, China. It no, comes, you're saying it's coming from the U.S. It comes specifically, most of them comes from Harvard Law School, if you believe it or not. Uh, I'm not surprised. I, 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 I like saying that La Harvard Law School is like the Wuhan lab for a uh, virus. Right. Uh, and the virus is spread around the world. Okay. Some countries have immune systems that are stronger than others. Mm -hmm. So Brazil has a very weak immune system, so the virus get there and destroy the country completely. Mm -hmm. the, this virus I'm talking about, is it's called juristocracy. Ah. So it's the substitution of a democracy, which is a government by the people, to a government by the bureaucrats, non-elected bureaucrats. Right. And it's, it's a beautiful thing for the globalists because they don't have, uh, they don't have to go through the very... Uh, slow process of the democratic uh, government that you have to pass a bill, you have to uh, elect uh, members of Congress, members of uh, the city hall, you have to elect the president, and you have all these checks and balances. It's so complicated. So they can go through a bunch, well, just a small group of judges or justices that they control. If they don't control directly, they mm -hmm. influence. They're always meeting. Um, if you look at the Davos meeting, the World Economic Forum, right. the Brazilian most important representative was the president, which is like the chief justice of our Supreme Court. Right. So, well, you all came over to the United States with a large delegation. I mean, really taking a risk, political risk to come here because we know that uh, Lula and, this, and the, these justices are targeting you all. And so you brought them here, you met with members of Congress. What is the response coming from the Republicans and from the Democrats on listening to your case and what's happening in Brazil in terms of political persecution and censorship? Well, we're starting to get some traction with the Republicans. Most of them were not aware of what was going on. Right. Um, and, and I blame the mainstream media uh, for that. Brazil only has... Uh, correspondence from the New York Times, Washington Post, and CNN. So you're not getting news from them. Mm -hmm. uh, they block anything that happened in Brazil. We held, held a press conference. They decided not to show up. They they uh, decide not to cover it. It's right. part of their tactic. So that's why most of the United States don't know what's going on in Brazil. They still think Brazil's a democracy. Mm -hmm. So uh, we're starting to get some traction, some awareness with the Republicans. And 
it looks like the Democrats know what's going on. Right. But they like it. That's it was part of their plan. So we had this hearing scheduled for the Tom Lantos Commission uh, with uh, that was uh, brought by uh, Congressman Chris Smith, mm -hmm. Republican from New Jersey, and then Congressman Jim uh, McGovern, McGovern right. decided to block it, and he received a phone call, I guess, from someone. Any reason? Did they give a reason why they blocked it? They did not. They mm -hmm. did not. They uh, one day from the other. Uh, they just re they said they received a phone call. Someone received a phone call. And they flipped their position completely, and then McGovern was very determined to make it not happen. So we know President Biden has met with President Lula. It, it, the, ob the obviously they view Brazil as an important trading partner, but it seems that the Biden administration is not willing to be critical at all of these uh, draconian actions taken by President Lula and and the Supreme Court against their political opponents. Is that the sense that you're getting from the Biden administration? Well, the Biden administration, I think, sometimes they're a little disappointed with the way that Lula is behaving, because um, they they thought that, and they actually vocalized that, there was a representative of the Department of State that said, well, look, we helped you. We helped to preserve your democracy. Right. Why are you being so anti-American? Because even the Biden administration's policies, the, the uh, Lula is being completely antagonistic. If you think about the, what Lula is trying to do with the BRICS, trying to undermine the dollar as the global currency uh, for trade, uh, he's working actively to support Hamas. I think now he's the uh, most important leader in the, fr the free world uh, that is openly supporting Hamas against Israel. So, and if you go to, even if you look at Russia, Brazil is now, Brazil last year uh, spent $6 billion buying uh, oil from Russia. Right. So it, it, all the policies, all the foreign policies of Lula are antagonistic of what Joe Biden, in, I don't know what he's trying to do. I don't know if he does. But. I think he's asleep half the time or falling downstairs. Sorry. But I think China, you, uh, you have the problem with Brazil attaching itself to China, to Russia, to Iran. I mean, all of them U.S. enemies. I mean, is is what's the next step? I mean, if they're going to try to trample on political opponents, if they're going to try to put Jair Bolsonaro in jail, what is the next step for the political opposition? Well, you, you have two visions of the world, and America is not the perfect place. I think we've seen better days. Yes. Uh, but still, if you, you can compare America and China, it's two different completely views of the world. And like it or not, you're going to be influenced by one of them. Mm -hmm. And you have to pick a side. It's like right. the Cold War in a sense. Yes. It's a new Cold War, right? Brazil is speaking China size. And it, that's very important for geopolitical reasons. I keep saying war is people, food, iron, and energy. So Brazil is the f fourth largest food producer in the world. All, most of the food that China eats comes from Brazil. Mm -hmm. uh, Brazil is the second iron ore producer in the world. Brazil uh, has more energy than most OPEP countries, produces more oil than most OPEP countries. And also, Brazil is fifth or sixth largest population in the world. So from a geopolitical perspective, Brazil is very important. China knows it. Mm. And they're bringing Brazil closer to them. And uh, on the flip side, Brazil is becoming more and more like China. We now have the Supreme Court just yesterday, they announced that they're going to have police powers to get data from every internet user on social media, and they will use police power to enforce uh, the laws against, their, they don't exist, but in their mind it does, the laws against misinformation, the laws against, to protect the electoral process, yeah, protect very, democracy. Yeah, you so can't question anything. You can't question right. it. That's China. That is China. That's not the vision. Well, and it's happening here in the U.S. It is. I mean, same you've virus. seen the Biden administration, the same virus, uh, you know, basically connecting with these social media companies and pushing and saying this is misinformation, this is not. It's interesting because our Supreme Court is taking up that issue. We don't know how they're going to rule yet, but there is a little more of the checks and balances, which it sounds in the case of Brazil, the Supreme Court is like, yeah, we're going to have to, we're going to allow for this to happen. You're absolutely right. So this is exactly what happened. And the idea is the same. We need to censor political opposition. Right. In the U.S., it was done by the deep state operatives working on Twitter and the, the, we saw the Twitter file, the Facebook file. Yes. They were there. They were censoring stories. They were censoring the Hunter Biden laptop, laptop story and a bunch of stories that could change the result of the elections. In Brazil, this is happening officially. Yeah. It's not something behind the scenes. 
it's happening sponsored by the Supreme Court. Like I said, it's the same virus, but we have different immune systems, and, 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 and this is very sad. So just a uh, last question here. For Biden, is, is it the call to, for sanctions? What should Joe Biden's administration do immediately? I don't think our congressmen can say that, and I think they would disagree with me, but since this, since this is my country as well now, it ha and it had been for a, for a long time, the United States, I can say that the United States cannot treat Brazil as is still a democracy. Mm. This country has a standard in foreign policy to, t to treat dictatorships as dictatorships. So sanctions, you have to cut aid, and you have to exert pressure, exert soft pressure. power, yeah. uh, in, in order to restore democracy and the fundamental rights in Brazil. Mm. You have to do it for two reasons. The first one is human rights. So we, we're all part of a global community, the good one, that protects human rights. Right. And, and America has been the sponsor for this for us for over a century yeah and that's one reason we need to restore human rights in brazil but the second reason is to protect american interests because you're if, if you think america first you, you you need to think that you don't want brazil going the china way you need brazil yeah, you need your allies you. you need your allies yeah. you know war we, we we learned that in the world war ii yeah that you need your allies you, you can't handle everything yourself no matter how great america is mm -hmm. and and so that's why I think the United States government needs to redirect its foreign policy against Brazil. Well, we're hoping uh, that we can do CPAC Brazil. Do you think that's a possibility? I think we can. It would be, uh, I believe, the fifth edition. Right. Right. Uh, yeah. And CPAC, the amazing thing about CPAC is that I've been coming to CPAC since, uh, I believe, 2017. So I, I saw the, all the changes on the event, and it's becoming more and more a global event. Yes. This year was beautiful. We had the chance to, to hear Bukele. We had the chance to hear, again, Eduardo Bolsonaro. Last year we had President Jair Bolsonaro yeah. was there as well. Uh, and, and then we had Millet, which, which shows there, there's hope for the Southern Hemisphere. So CPAC is becoming the hub yeah. for the lovers of freedom uh, and lovers of common sense. Because that's right now what we're fighting for. That's right, and that's exactly what President Trump says. He said, uh, "I'm, you know, I might not be a conservative, but I'm about common sense." So I, I we absolutely agree, and we uh, support the efforts that you're doing, and we're all going to fight together for freedom. Paolo Figueiredo, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you, Mercy. Really appreciate it. And we're going to keep on this important topic of Brazil. So keep watching. Uh, look. I know it's interesting because everyone wants to be so America focused. At the same time, we have to remember that things that happen not only here in America, but they expand this idea of communism, Marxism, dictatorships that destroy people's freedoms. Uh, we have to be aware, we have to be united, and we all have to fight back. So thanks for watching.